So you want an antenna that does everything. All of HF, all of VHF, all of microwave, and so on. Do you want the kitchen sink with that? Hello, ham radio operators and electronics enthusiasts the world around. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign K0OG, and I am here with a request actually from many of you. You've asked about an antenna called the ZS6BKW multiband HF antenna, which is supposed to be a whole bunch better than the G5RV. Now that leaves a lot of room because I've never had any kind of good luck with the G5RV. But if you go to this website, you can learn all about it. Now the website is given right across the top here at the awarc.org site. This is the Albury Wodonga Amateur Radio Club. And this is the antenna we're talking about here. I'm going to zoom in on this. Let's just take a look at this right here. This is the diagram. There's an insulator here and an insulator here, an insulator here. It's fed by 38.1 feet of ladder line. And then there's a one-to-one -one current ballon down here, okay? In this blow up, you can see 36.8. But in the original picture, that's a little bit hard to see. And my assistant interpreted that as 48.8. That's okay. We, were, we fixed that. Now, here is what a one-to-one -one current ballon looks like. It's just these wires wound together. And the one that I got from DX Engineering, which, by the way, was about $30, this is from LDG, which is a big manufacturer of antenna tuners. And there's the link right there. However, I got this from DX Engineering, okay? I also picked up, for this, I got 45 feet of ladder line, which cost me $1.18 a foot, because I got 45 feet, so that was $53.10 for the ladder line. The wire I already had. Now, if we look inside the ballon, this is what we see. We see exactly what was in the figure. The two wires coming in from the coax, okay, and wrapping around and wrapping around and wrapping around, and then coming to the balanced part over here. Now, this is how we attach the center. We've got a center insulator here that I also had in my junk box. And we curled the wires around each other from the window line and then we soldered them there so that they'll stay put. Now, here's what we did at the other end. We just wrapped it through and wrapped some wire back. I have shown in a previous video that you can wrap wire back around even if it's insulated, okay? And that's what we did. Now, here's what the antenna looks like after we put it up yesterday evening. The thing is about 100 feet long, okay? And then it's got this 39.1 feet of ladder line, which was measured very carefully, okay? Now, this thing's only up about 30 feet. So if you drop this straight down, it's going to end up on the ground. We didn't want that. So we pulled it to where we were in a tree, okay? And you can see some parachute cord going over here and tying to a tree limb. It's up high enough, nobody will trip on it. This is my standard coax I use for testing all antennas. Here's the ballon, and here's this in here, works just fine. This is what it looks like in the sunset. The tree is over here. Because of the tension we put on this, it really draws the antenna over to one side. Now this was our initial tune with the mistake in it that I was talking about where it was two feet long on each end. And you can see this here, it seems to look a little bit long. In fact, I took uh, readings on 80 meters. You can see it wants to resonate down here, goes above two to one here. It's still tunable across the entire band. This is uh, 40 meters and it's okay, but still we're, we're best below the band. And then on 20 meters, we're definitely below the band, although we're on under two to one across the band. If we retuned it, which we did, we took two feet off of each end and it's looking better. Let's look at each band. Here's 80 meters. Down toward the bottom, be great for FT8, but still under three to one up here. So your radio's built-in tuner will handle this just fine across the entire 80 meter band. Here is 40 meters. I didn't check 60, but it looked okay. Here is 30 meters. 
30 meters is not a very wide band, and so it's 1.5 there across the entire band. Here's 20 meters, and look, we've got the null right in the middle of the band. Very nice. Uh, FT8 would be over about here, but you've got good tuning across. This is 17 meters. Now, 17 meters is quite low. 17 meters is often a band that is hard to tune on multi-band antennas. It sure was on my HF9V. Here is 15 meters, uh, which is a pretty wide band. Now, this I would definitely throw in the tuner that's in the radio. It'll tune that down just real nice. And we go up to 12 meters. It's down nice and low. Very good near miss on the, the bottom part there. 10 meters. Okay, it's under 2 to 1 across the entire band. Now, most of your sideband work, CW work, sideband work, and so on is right in here where you're under 1.5 to 1. So, again, you could do this without the tuner, but probably better with the tuner. Just for kicks, I thought I'd try it out on 6 meters because there was some stuff in here that talked about it going to 6 meters. Now, I don't know what kind of pattern you're going to get out of 6 meters here, but FT8 is down in this area right here. Okay, so there we go. So this is the first video we're doing on this antenna. We built it, put it up, and uh, did SWR measurements across all the HF bands, plus we did six meters. Now, the next video, we're going to do some receive comparisons with my really good vertical. Now, I know there's going to be cross-polarization issues, but we're going to go ahead and try that out. That'll be in the next video. So, there you have it. The antenna does work very nicely. I might add that if you go out of the band, the SWR can get pretty high. But overall, I was extremely pleased. This antenna does work. Now, you need about 100 feet in a line uh, to do this. Now again, you can do the same kind of thing where you can droop the ends down a little bit if you have to, or you can set it up as an inverted V. A lot of different things that you can do to make this thing work well for you. Note that the matching stub, the 450 ohm ladder line matching stub, is quite long. And if you can't get this thing up to 50 feet, which most hams cannot, that thing's going to lay on the ground. I strongly suggest pulling it away. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it can be looping like this or something just as long as it's off the ground and should work fine. I'm pretty jazzed about this. The proof will be in the pudding in the receiving tests, and I'm going to try some FT8 on it too on a couple different bands, okay? Now, I would like to mention this is a $2 bill, U.S. currency. If you become a patron, or if you bump up your patron amount to the next level, we will send you, as a token of our thanks, a $2 bill. And th these are legal currency. If you see a $3 bill, that's not, but this is a 2 They're fairly uncommon. I won't say they're rare, because you can go to a bank and get them. Most of them that you see haven't been circulated very much, like this one right here is pretty crisp. Join up on PayPal at any of the levels there, or if you move up a level, I'll send you one of these. It's a one-time thing. When you join, you get this. Also, channel membership, same thing. So, until we next meet, 73. <music>